In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a slam and ground pound for your Godot game. First, we'll make some placeholder functions in the character script so we can reference them in the animation player later. Then we'll start by creating two animations, one for initiating the ground pound and one for when the player hits the ground. It's pretty common in games that have animations like these that sell the impact of the ground pound. After that, we create keyframes to call those placeholder functions into two animations. Lastly, we add the logic to put the motion together and to prevent the player interaction until it's finished. Come on in slam into Godot and put this thing together. If you'd like to follow along with a sample project, I have links in the description for both the base sample and the completed sample. With the base sample, I ripped out the flick logic into character script since we don't need it for this tutorial. I also add some base collision logic like this, and some basic jumping logic like this. While still in the character script, create these placeholder functions. Start ground pound, which will be called when the player hits their down arrow key. Ground pound move, which will be called once the initial ground pound animation completes and end ground pound, which will be called at the very end of the sequence after a player lands on the ground. Now let's go to the character scene and make the animations. In the character scene, create a new animation player child node. In the animation editor, create an animation called ground pound init. We'll be making an animation like this. Change the total animation duration to 0.25 seconds. Click on the Sprite 2D and click on the key button next to rotation to create a keyframe. When it asks, you can accept the create reset tracks. Reset tracks allow your sprite to go back to its original state in case you mess something up in the editor. Change the snapping to 0.01 and move the cursor around 0.25 seconds in the timeline. Update the rotation to 360 degrees and click the key button again. At the end of the animation, click the add track button and select call method track. A call method track is a pretty neat feature of Godot that allows you to call functions at a certain place in the animation. Right click in the timeline where the keyframe should be and select insert key. In the menu that pops up, select the character node and choose the ground pound move method. This will make the character fall once the animation completes. Now let's make an animation for when the character hits the ground. Create a new animation and make it ground pound land. Set the duration of the animation to 0.4 seconds. On frame 0, click the Sprite 2D and the key button next to position and scale. Apply the reset tracks when asked. Move the playhead to around 0.05 seconds. In the editor, scale the sprite like this. Click the key button on the position and scale attributes again. We will need position here because we are technically translating the sprite a little by doing this. Repeat this process again around 0.2 seconds, this time squashing the sprite even more. In my example animation, you can see the sprites hold its squash position a little and then snaps back quickly. This is a little trick we can use to exaggerate the motion. To do this, duplicate the frame with Ctrl D from 0.2 seconds over to around 0.35 seconds, so the squash holds. To finish the animation, duplicate the frame at 0 seconds over to 0.4 seconds. Test the animation and tweak it as you see fit. Lastly, add another call method track from 0.4 seconds to call the end ground pound method. Let's go back to the character script to tie together the motion. In the physics process function, add a line of code like this to start the ground pound when the player hits the down arrow key. It's also important that the player is in the air, as there's no reason to start the ground pound on the ground. Over in the start ground pound function, add this logic. Also create a boolean variable called isGroundPound at the top of the script, which we can use as a flag to indicate the motion is in progress. By setting the velocity to zero, the player will be frozen in the air until the animation completes. To make sure that the player stays frozen in the air, we'll need to disable the gravity while the ground pound is active. Go to the line where we add gravity and add this condition above it to stop gravity during a ground pound. Next, we'll need to make the character fall after the init animation. To do that, go to the ground pound move function and add this line of code. To find the ground pound fall speed constant at the top of the script as well. We want this number to be positive, as positive y is downwards in Godot's 2D space. When the player hits the ground, we want to stop the ground pound. However, we want to play the landing animation we created. It's not worth enabling control again until the animation finishes. So we will instead play the land animation when the player hits the ground, and then the animation will handle the setting of is ground pound to false. In the collide function, add a condition to check that the player is on the floor and that they are also in a ground pound. If true, play the ground pound land animation like this. And lastly, we need to unset is ground pound in the end ground pound function. Now test the game. The ground pound is working and the sequence looks Looks good. However, if you try mashing the down button in midair, you can initiate this ground pound multiple times. You can also jump out of the ground pound early, which gives you this buggy interaction. To fix this, go back to the character script. Right before the logic accepts the inputs, add a condition that checks to see if the player is not in a ground pound before allowing inputs. Then nest the input conditions under it. Now when you run your game, the issue is resolved. That's all there is to it. If this video is helpful, consider leaving a like. It helps me help more people like you. Thank you for watching and have a great day.